Presidential pardons. Usually they're reserved for pigs, like Sheriff Joe Arpaio. But at this time of year, pardons are also for turkeys. The animal I just realized are disgusting to look at. Why does it have a mouth scrotum? But at news broke, we're going to take this Thanksgiving to offer one very special pardon of our own. Who's it going to be? Yes, in a tradition almost as bizarre as the one where we fight one another to the death at 4 in the morning to save $30 on a PlayStation, every year the U.S. president mercifully spares a turkey from being slaughtered for Thanksgiving dinner. And then murders a different turkey. The pardon turkey is then whisked away to George Washington's beautiful Mount Vernon estate, where they are, and this is true, usually dead within a year because they were bred to be eaten and literally everything about the Thanksgiving story is tragic. So what other discolored, neck-waddled, bird brain creatures should be pardoned for their actions during one of America's worst years yet? The ones who've stood out from the bunch and have shown that maybe they're deserving of redemption? We could pardon Mitch McConnell, whose impressive gobbler has tried to nibble at health care and women's reproductive rights over the years. However, as Alabama nominee for Senate Roy Moore starts to appear more and more like country R. Kelly, the big turkey surprisingly came out with this line. Or do you believe these allegations to be true? I believe the women, yes. Good for you, Mitch. But until you believe women enough to give them jurisdiction over their own uteruses, no pardon. Perhaps a pardon should go to the leaders who had the courage to stop salivating over an all-Republican government and point out that this president is unhinged. Like Arizona Senator Jeff Flake, who gave a 17-minute speech that managed to condemn Trump without actually mentioning his name once. We must stop pretending that the de de degradation of our politics and the conduct of some in our executive branch are normal. And by some in our executive branch, you know exactly who I mean. Homeland Security Advisor Tom Bosser. Sick man. Or what about Senator Bob Corker? He also spoke out against Trump and did manage to mention him by name, but avoided a different word. The president uh, has great difficulty with the truth. Much of what he says is untrue. Provable untruths. Just factually incorrect. Again, untruths. Yes, also known as a lie, Mr. Corker. Why can't you say lie? We grew up in our family not using the L word, okay. We could watch the L word, great show with all those L words pretending to love other L words. So for finally speaking out against the president, do Bob Corker or Jeff Flake get the pardon? Well... I'm announcing today that my service in the Senate will conclude at the end of my term in early January 2019. Another Republican is taking himself out of the running. Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee announcing he won't run for re-election next year. Oh, they just pardoned themselves by resigning. If they had spoken out and then faced the fire, we might forgive them then. But no, no pardon. <laughs> what about former presidents like war criminal turned Bob Ross George W. Bush, who condemned Trumpism in a speech at the only place that still welcomes his advice, his own institute? Our politics seems more vulnerable to conspiracy theories and outright fabrication. We've seen our discourse degraded by casual cruelty. Yeah, that's the problem. The cruelty's just too casual. Bush only had casual cruelty on Casual Cruelty Fridays. Nice try, 43. Just because you went from mushroom clouds to happy clouds doesn't mean you get a pardon. No pardon. <laughs> what about Sean Spicer? After leaving his position of official White House lies vomiter, he did manage to do what no other Trump official has done. Take a joke. This will be the largest audience to witness an Emmys, period. And in what would still be a far cry from Hollywood's least proud moment of the year, A-listers seem to embrace him with open arms. And he practically received a hero's welcome the moment he stepped off stage. There were hugs and handshakes in the Microsoft Theater lobby where Spicer was spotted by the Hollywood Reporter holding a large beer and posing for pictures. Yes, forthcoming, Sean Spicer's rent-a-retired right-winger mascot service. Perfect entertainment for your liberal celebrations. We got Cheney, Ashcroft, Condi's there. Sean Spicer, no pardon. And for that matter, any Hollywood grope turd asking for forgiveness, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Live stream castration, or no apology really accepted. No pardon. <laughs> Could we maybe find it in our hearts to pardon Robert Mueller? He is leading the Trump-Russia investigation thoroughly, and his work could very well help end this waking orange nightmare. But it's weird that he gets so much respect now, when after 9-11 when he was FBI chief, the Bureau helped round up 1,200 Muslim and Arab men purely based on religion and ethnicity. 
and he went along with the lie that Saddam Hussein was somehow connected to 9-11, even though there was no intelligence to back that up. And what do we get after eight years of war? ISIS. Don't ever say the Iraq war never got you nothing. I'ma have to say no pardon. <laughs> we also could find it in our bleeding liberal hearts to pardon John McCain. He did help tank the GOP's healthcare obliteration bill with the thumb hurt around the world, and he was one of the first Republicans to tell Roy Moore to step down. And he's old and has brain cancer, but he's still one of the NRA's top recipients and may throw his weight behind the congressional initiative to impale the middle class on a spire. I mean, tax reform. So no, no pardon. <laughs> what about Trump voters? Hang on. All right, the 53% of men and 42% of women who voted for Donald Trump, some in part because the army of Jesus on Facebook told them that Hillary was boxing the son of God, some of them are eating their words a year after they cast their vote. Could we potentially pardon those who now feel sorry for it? When he said that he, uh, you know, he wasn't going to cut Medicaid or, you know, the benefits, uh, I believe that. If election day were today, who would you vote for? Hillary. In fact, I uh, started a, a group on Facebook called I Regret, I Regret Voting for Trump. But I voted for you, now I see you're a coward. May God have mercy on my soul for voting for you. Wow, may God have mercy on my soul? That is someone who definitely believes there is a hell and that upon entry they brand you with hashtag MAGA. There were even Trump voters in this angry focus group who were asked to share their thoughts on Trump's presidency in just one word or phrase. Outrageous. Dishonest. Disappointed. Narcissist. Abject disappointment. Unique. Unique? This isn't the Antiques Roadshow. That guy does not get a pardon. Trump voters, we can't say we didn't warn you for more than a year not to enable such a dangerous man, but because you feel regret, you are hereby pardoned. Now, go get yourself a copy of Invisible Man and the New Jim Crow, meet your Latino neighbors, and join the resistance. You're with us now. Bienvenidos. And that word should not scare you. Hey guys, happy Thanksgiving. Um, what do you think? Who would you pardon out of all those people? Were we fair in saying repentant Trump voters? Eh, it was a hard one. Also, we're also answering questions or any impression requests that you all might have because I am a monkey. And we did hear you loud and clear after our tilt video. We're keeping it, keeping the Tahoga. <laughs> <laughs>